Greetings. Today I'd like to do a quick little video about the Studio Technologies Model 234 Announcers Console. This is part of their 230 series, which has got the 232, 234, and the 236, which are variant based on how many talkback channels the unit offers. Announcers consoles, sometimes also called commentators consoles, are useful for things like sporting events, live events, etc., where you have somebody who is presenting to the primary feed, program feed, and then also needs to be able to talk to and or listen to various other feeds for crew, whether it be program director, camera ops, research team, venue security, you know, possibilities are endless, right? These are kind of a niche device, but they, if you're in, if you have the need, you have the need and they work quite well. And one of the things that Studio Technologies has done is they have made these um, Dante based. And so that means you get a lot of channels in, a lot of channels out with an ethernet cable, which gives you even more flexibility, such as having a bunch of different talkback channels. And let me switch real quick. So this is their website. This is the 234. You can see back channel. Uh, they've got, as I said, Dante. So and not only that, but they're doing uh, Dante Broadway. So they support Dante uh, redundant mode. So you got primary and secondary. You can do PoE in on the primary as well as they have DC in on four pin XLR. So if you don't have power over ethernet available or you want redundancy because you can have both of them connected and if one fails the other keeps the unit going and that's again the benefit of them using Broadway over say Ultimo chipset. Another nice feature they have is they have the mic in and they also have a mic pass through so if you're at a venue and you need to give a copy of the commentators audio to uh, house you can easily do that by sending that through the pass-through mic out. Phones is obviously for headphones. The USB is just for firmware updates. And then these A and B ports that are a little hard to see on the screen, on the photo here, I'll show you one on the live one in a moment, are so that you can connect different headphone, headset, five pin, seven pin, different variants of what are typically more like broadcast headsets that might be used in a commentator or announcers type situation. You've got a main out and that's a mute button there. You've got your talkbacks. You've got two program feeds. These are stereo. These knobs are volume controls so they, the announcer can mix in how much they want of those. They can mix in how much of each of the talkback uh, channels. And they don't have to strictly be talkback. You could do something like if you're at a sporting event, you might be, you know, team audio is on channel four. So the announcers can hear what the team is saying to itself or things along those lines, right? You've got a uh, side tone control. So if you want to have the mic feedback in to the announcer's headset, you can do that. And then obviously you got master volume for the headset output as well, right? And if I switch real quick over here, here you can see the one that I'm talking through, right? Not muted. You can see, well, the angle's not great for it, but the LED's bumping around as I talk, showing volume coming in. And since I'm talking through that one, I'm gonna use a different one to sort of show it more in detail so if you give me one sec so here we are with a live unit and as i said green is not muted red mute now one of the things you probably also can see hopefully it's not too blown out um, the led caps on each of the volumes lights up green when there's signal present. I believe it's when it's negative 40 dB uh, FS 
or higher. And then you can also click it to mute that particular input. I'll click it again to unmute the input. So your talent has the ability to control what they're hearing to a great deal of, of control. And then like I say, you can turn these up or down. When you do that, it, the, the display lights up to give you a rough estimate of where you're at, right? And then as I said, here on the back, you can see this one's being powered by PoE, status lights. Hopefully you can see a little better the cutouts where you can mount those additional options for headsets, for single cable headsets. And then also, you know, it can do phantom power. Um, the gain is 60, I forget, 60 something dB of gain available. Now, in order to adjust the gain, you have to do that with their ST controller app. You know, they try to make it so that, you know, the talent can't screw themselves up by, by adjusting knobs that shouldn't be adjusted by the gain on their mic, right? Let that be controlled by your sound guys, utility, whatever, um, as necessary, right? There are a bajillion features on this thing, and uh, it's been an exaggeration, but mainly what I'm doing at with that is not going to try to cover all of it in this video because it would be way too long. What I do want to talk about is a really important feature that this console or announcer's console supports that most other announcer's consoles do not. And that is, and I'll switch back to computer real quick. Bring up Dante. So these units have multiple outputs, multiple inputs, which you would think, hey, it's just one mic. Why do you have so many, right? And this is, again, one of the benefits of them using the Broadway chipset, right? You can see on the outputs, they've got a main out, they've got an aux out, which is the important thing that I'll get to in a moment. You have some number of talkback channels. This will vary by which version you have. And then you also have the headphones left and right out. And on the input, you have program one left and right in, program two left and right in, so maybe that's an alternate language feed or something. You have however many talkbacks in, and then you have a mic in. And why would you have a mic in? Well, because one of the settings is that you can say whether the main and the talkbacks come from the analog mic itself directly, or do they come from that digital mic in? Furthermore, one of the settings for the aux channel is that you can sell it to be a hot mic where it will send the analog mic out continuously no matter what the state of the buttons on the front of the device are. Now, with that mic in and the headphones out, you could do things like, you know, have a commentator who's got a wireless mic and IEMs and they could be walking around. Obviously, if you need to touch the buttons, they have to be within range so you can run over and touch the buttons. But if they just need to be able to hear the director or your crew, if they don't necessarily care about talking back, that's fine. They can be totally remote, right? And you do that over the power of Dante going to, or for, you know, so you, you know, you look at things like Sure, um, Sennheiser, a bunch of different companies, you know, uh, Electrosonics, they all have. Uh, wireless mic systems with built-in Dante, or maybe you've got them all routed into your main board and your main board has a Dante module in it, you know, however. Same thing, headphones out, can send that to an IEM transmitter and, you know, you're good. But the really powerful feature here, which is the thing that I really want to get into, is that when you set this aux mic to the, the, the aux channel to the hot mic that I said, what that allows you to do is use Dante as a digital insert. So for example, in my case, I send 
if we look at our cedar here, so you can see that channel one on my cedar DNS, which is a dialogue noise suppression system, very good one, is being fed by the aux channel from this first console. And then I've got these two other model 234s as well. And so you can see that channel two is the second 234, channel three is the third, right? So I can take that aux channel, send it through the cedar where it removes background noise, which, you know, if you're in a stadium environment or other live event, you may very well have a lot of background noise that you want to try to clear out. And then I send that back in so you can see that the mic in on this console is coming from the corresponding output on the cedar. And the benefit of that is that you now have clean audio to go both to the main output as well as to all of the talkback channels. And that's really powerful because, you know, it can be the difference between being able to understand somebody and, and not because of all the background noise, right? And like I say, that's kind of a feature that's unique to the Model 230 series from Studio Technologies that is really kind of a, a game changer for the power of these units and you know I know Studio Technologies doesn't currently have a multi-channel or multi-presenter unit which Glenn Sound does, SonFX does, you know other players in the space do but they don't do this digital insert over Dante that the Studio Technologies unit does. If you're curious about how to do, I'm going to transition for a little bit here, I'll keep this short, how these talkback channels are working. So I'm doing it with a Studio Technologies model 5422. So that's this unit here. And basically, again, this is, well, this one's based on Brooklyn, so uh, even more channels. They have a 32 and a 64 channel version of it. It does, again, Dante redundancy and also has multiple power options. So you got AC in and you got a DC in as well. And the intercom engine from them is basically a quick way to create groups of talkback channels. And you can set them to a number of different modes. But what I've got them, like the default and what I've got it set to is party mode. And actually it's party mode with auto mic mixing as well, which you can either select to be on or off. And so you can see that, for example, I have on the, the, the 234 I'm on, the talkback one goes to the first channel of that 234. And if we look down here, the talkback one input is coming from the output of the 234. And then the, the, the intercom engine does automatic mix minus for every channel. And so it's real quick to set up, hey, here's a group in this case, you know, you say how many you, you, uh, inputs, how many members you want in a group, eight, and you, can, you can do a whole bunch of different combinations. I've got it as eight groups of eight in this case. Uh, and I'm also not using multiple talkbacks here, as you can see, because I've only got one routed. But it wouldn't matter. I could, I could link all four of them and it would work just fine. But you need to have some form of device out there to create your party line, to use the, the sort of the, the old school term, for your talkbacks. That could be expensive IFB systems like Clearcom and whatnot. And I say expensive, you know, in the relative world. You have the Studio Technologies has their intercom engine like we're using here, which is expensive, but a lot cheaper than the Clearcoms. You could use something like a Behringer X-Rack, which would be even cheaper. And, you know, but you have to spend a lot more time configuring all the talkbacks and the mix minuses. The benefit of the intercom engine here is that you just say how many groups you want, party line mode, it automatically does all of your mix minuses, it does the mic mixing in case, you know, auto mixing in case multiple people are trying to talk at once. It just simplifies life and when you're trying to do something and you're under pressure because it's a live event or whatever, simplifying life is what it's all about. At any rate, I hope this was helpful, quick look at, you know, 
an announcer's console and it's sort of one real key feature that makes it way more powerful than a lot of its um, the alternate offerings. Hope this was helpful and if you got any questions please let me know in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Thanks. Cheers.